we are once again talking about elements on the periodic table. And in this episode, we want to talk about number 13, aluminum. You might not believe this, but aluminum is the most abundant metal on Earth. And about 8% of Earth's mass is made up of aluminum. For a metal that is this plentiful, we just gotten to know it recently because most of human history, they didn't even know aluminum existed. The reason for that is aluminum was never in pure form and it wasn't like iron where you could purify it easily. The first time that aluminum was written in history was in the year 1530. A Swiss scientist by the name of Paracelsus was in his laboratory working on different things. He saw something in the mineral that has aluminum on it that is not useful and he named it alum, which means bitter salt. This is the mineral he was testing with, which is called bauxite, and we'll talk more about it in a minute. Years after this Swiss scientist, more scientists around the world continue to experiment on this mineral to see if they can figure something out or not. But unfortunately, they don't see anything. They don't even see that inside this mineral, there is a metal that they have never seen before. It is pretty difficult to remove it because it's hidden in there pretty well. That all changed when we get to the year 1824 when a Danish scientist is experimenting with this mineral and his name was Hans Orsted. He eventually successfully purified a piece of aluminum, not as pure as other metals back then, but it was acceptable. At first he thinks it's tin, but after plenty of other experiments, Hans Orsted realizes that this is a completely brand new metal. When Hans Orsted announced in his paper that he has figured out a new form of metal, other scientists jumped on it and started experimenting as well. A lot of scientists from all over the world tried to purify this metal inside this mineral, especially the French and Americans. The Americans have recently discovered electricity and are looking for new metals to send electricity through it. They thought that this brand new metal could be the chosen one, so they were really on it to figure it out. And eventually, for the very first time in the year 1884, they purified the most abundant metal on Earth. One of the first things that they create with this aluminum technology is the tip of the Washington Monument. The most interesting part is that this little six pound piece of aluminum that was the most expensive metal at that time was more expensive than gold itself. But right now, this six pounds of aluminum only cost $6. But if it was made of gold, it would be worth 180,000. But why is aluminum so expensive back then? Because to purify it, it was actually quite difficult. So it cost a lot of money. Fast forward five years, we get to 1889, when an Austrian scientist by the name of Carl Joseph Bayer figures out a way to purify aluminum in a cheapest possible way. So this way, it's not gonna cost as much as gold. The technology that Joseph Bayer had figured out was so revolutionary that it changed the market completely. And aluminum went from more expensive than gold to becoming one of the cheapest metals in the world. When industries get familiar with aluminum, they realize that this is very useful. It's lightweight, it's durable, and if you treat it, you could actually make it quite strong. And it also does not rust, which is always a plus. So in the beginning of the 20th century, that's when we see the usage of aluminum in different industries. And it usually started with shipbuilding. But of course, aluminum was never their first choice they preferred steel to build these ships. So the demand of aluminum was not that high. When World War I finishes and everybody's trying to build different aircrafts, a lot of engineers realize that the best metal to use for these airplanes is aluminum. It's strong and it's lightweight. After this happened, each industry always tried to purify aluminum in a way 
so they can be more durable and stronger. All this usage for aluminum continues until we get to after World War II, when aluminum is not only used in the aircraft industry, but it enters normal life everyday things. After 1945, you could see aluminum in a whole lot of different areas, like home appliances, car supply, car parts, and many, many more. When we get to 1956, one of the most important things that involves aluminum is invented, and that's the aluminum can. Look at aluminum production graph of the world. Around the 1950s and 60s, that's when you see it spike up and not slow down. In 1910, around the whole world, only 100,000 tons of aluminum was produced. But when we get to 1960, that number has turned into 10 million tons. But now it's even higher. Right now, the number is around 70 million tons. But the technology that Joseph Beyer had invented was extremely crucial for an industry like this. And some of his tricks is still used to this day. The easiest thing you can recycle in the world is aluminum. And recycling aluminum has its own history. In the 1960s, the Americans realized that a whole lot of aluminum is being thrown away and being let out into the dump. And this is when the idea of recycling aluminum came up because how valuable this metal is. They were successful because they could use 5% of the energy to turn this recycled aluminum back to pure aluminum. So when you recycle, you save 95% of the energy. This metal is not toxic to humans, but just like any other metal, too much of it is not good for you. That is why a lot of people that buy deodorant, they make sure it says aluminum free on it because they don't want to wipe that on their skin. Most doctors believe that if too much aluminum gets into your system, it's gonna have a very negative effect on your brain, on your liver, and of course your kidney. So it destroys everything important. Aluminum pots and pans have always been around and you could still find them to this day, but they are not good for you, especially when you cook acidic food or if you scratch its surface. That's gonna cause the metal to go into your food and into your bloodstream. Doctors believe you can consume 50 milligrams of aluminum per day, but after that, it's toxic to your body. Right now, the best pots and pans you could use is stainless steel or cast iron. The most common pots and pans you see, especially in the US, is the ones lined with Teflon. Teflon has its own problems. If it's brand new and no scratches, it's no problem, it works fine. But if you scratch it, that's gonna allow it to seep through your food and enter your body, and that's when it turns toxic. It's interesting to note that up until 2008, in every country of Europe, Teflon is banned. So you cannot buy these pots and pans in Europe, but a lot of other places you can. Where's the biggest aluminum mine in the world? I mean, of course you can't find pure aluminum in the wild. We're mainly looking for bauxite mines, a mineral that most of it consists of aluminum. The biggest bauxite mine of the world is in Australia and 110 million tons of it per year is sent out. In second place with the most amount of bauxite is Guinea in Central Africa. And the third country is China. But which country produces the most amount of aluminum? That means a country that purifies the bauxite and takes the aluminum out of it. The biggest producer of aluminum is China that produces 58% of the world's aluminum. So it is in first place with a huge margin. Each year, 37 million tons of aluminum is produced in China. Just like we said earlier, per year 70 million tons of aluminum are produced and 37 of those is made by China. 
In second place, we have Russia that produced one tenth of China, around 3.4 million tons. And in third place, you have India. Let's talk about everybody's favorite part, the price. The price we're giving you is the price right now when we're recording it. It's about $2.23 per kilogram. They only mention it in tons. So it's $2,230 per ton. 